besides um, <clears throat> digging into scripture and, and seeking the Lord, asking what he wants them to do, um, what, what else can you see? What are the vital things that Christians need to do right now? They, you know, they can, they can get your videos and educate themselves and learn what's going on. Um, but as far as uh, making a stand to change culture, uh, to draw people to Jesus, to, to, to stop or slow the, the New World Order from, from advancement, um, like what are the top two things you could see people could do? Well, you, you, you do need to be educated about what's going on. It's tough to direct other people or encourage other people if you don't understand what's going on with COVID or mm -hmm. climate change. So we need mm -hmm. to understand the issues so we can very kindly present the truth where people can see, I know this is what they're saying, but here's what the facts are. Because it, it sets you free. The truth sets you free. Mm -hmm. When you're able to share the truth with someone and they know you're telling them the truth and you've studied issues, it sets them free from that enslavement, that fear on whatever issue it is. And that's a wonderful thing you could do because each single person that you're able to come alongside and encourage and influence and build up where then they're doing that to others, you've doubled yourself. Yes. Even if it's just one person, we think everything's gotta be some big thing. It doesn't. Almost all real change, all real purposefulness that, that goes generationally starts at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even this mm -hmm. movement that has taken over our country a hundred years ago was just grass was trying to influence poison one children, one child at a time, one college professor, you know, pushing this idea, that idea, and slowly it started growing. Mm -hmm. And so we just need to do the exact opposite thing in reverse. Yeah. Where we start spreading the truth one person at a time. And of course, sharing the gospel, because that's with all of a sudden your eyes are open. Right. When you're when you're when you're spiritually blind. You can't see right. what you can't see. But all of a sudden when you, you can see, oh, I didn't know. So so that that's so vital. So I, I think that's the main thing is is understanding the times, living out the truth, and then sharing it with others. So you keep swelling your ranks of people that do understand what's going on, that do see, oh, this is just a big scheme, isn't it? This isn't about helping the people of the world. It's about enslaving the people of the world. Well, I'm supposed to love my neighbor. And for me to allow this to go on without standing against it wouldn't be doing that. That's right. So I must stand and speak the truth and lovingly and encourage people with the truth because I, I don't want them to have to live in the world that they're trying to create. Because I know from studying the 20th century, I know exactly what the world will look like. Mm -hmm. Read 1984 by George Orwell and you see this is what the world looks like. And we shouldn't want that for anybody. Yeah, yeah. And your um, your kids are, are going to be growing up in this if, if the church doesn't stand up now. That's right. Um, now, that's one of the main things that first motivated me. I saw all my little children and I realized where we were going. If you plot 1950s America on a graph and 2021 on a graph and draw a line, you can see exactly where we're going. Yep. I mean, you don't have to guess. And I saw that as a father and I said, I better do something. That was some of the motivation to making the movie. I go, I want to have at least done something, even if I don't succeed, where my kids know dad tried. He tried to stand up against this. He tried to speak the truth. And if nothing else, that will be a good example to them. Yes. Maybe if they are living in a communist state or whatever. Yes. Life still goes on and you still need to be faithful one day at a time. And you still be, need to be doing what God's asked you to do, no matter where you live. I've interviewed hundreds of people now since I made the movies over the last 10 years that grew up in communist countries. And they say, Curtis, it's horrible, but life still goes on. And you still have to know how to do what God's asked you to do. You have to have the little underground church and you have to do this and that, but you still do it. And yes. you're still sharing the gospel, even though there's a potential for a great you know, consequence from doing that. Well, you do it anyway, because God said to. And so I've talked to so many of those people. It's been really encouraging. Realizing, okay, even if the ship sinks, we're still to be faithful. We're still to be doing the same marching orders, spreading the truth, living the truth, and loving our neighbor by telling them the truth. And God will be with us whatever we have to go through. Like a Richard Wormbrandt, mm -hmm. who was yes. tortured for eight, you know, 14 yes. years in Romanian communist prisons. God, he said God was right with me there. Yeah. And he got to come out of that 
and then come to America, the free world, and share those testimonies to encourage hundreds of millions of people. God will never allow you to suffer if he's not doing something with it in a, in a large scale thing. He would never be, be like that. He might allow you to suffer, but if you're suffering, someone else is gonna benefit from that in, in the future. So again, our orders are just be faithful one day at a time. <laughs> Amen.